Hello and welcome to Pit Resource Connection. I'm Mary Smith, your host, and we are pleased to have Malika Albrecht here, who is with the Rocking Horse Ranch um, out there on 43, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Right across from Rock Springs. That's yeah. how most people find us. <laughs> All right, and so what is the Rocking Horse Ranch first? Let's, let's we are a therapeutic riding program and we provide equine assisted activities and therapeutic um, activities for people with disabilities. So a wide range of disabilities that we serve and ages four and up. So we have adults as well. A lot of people think we're just children, but we also mm -hmm. work with adults that have disabilities. So that could be a physical disability, emotional, cognitive, or psychological. So what kind of activities do you do? Oh, fun stuff. Well, the most, most people have heard about our therapeutic riding, which is fantastic. But in case people haven't heard what therapeutic riding is, it's where we're teaching riding skills. Um, and what makes it therapeutic is that we have a whole system that is devised around making it safe and progressing at the rate that the individual would best um, benefit from. So our certifying organization, you know, how we became a premier accredited center is PATH um, came out and visited our site. And PATH is a professional association for therapeutic horsemanship. Um, it's an international group and mm -hmm. we have sister programs all throughout um, North Carolina and all throughout the world actually. So um, the other activities that we do would be like ground school. So for some of our students, for whatever reason, um, they might not choose to do the therapeutic riding. It could be that they're nervous about riding and they want to know the horse first, which mm -hmm. is developing a relationship, so it would be unmounted. Or it could be something like with my daughter, she was having active seizures and she had been in our TR program, she had been riding with us, um, but obviously I'm not going to put somebody that's having active seizures on horseback. Um, so she moved to ground school and they can actually earn badges just like you would in Girl Sc oh. Scouts or Boy Scouts. Yeah, so she actually prefers now um, that relationship, that ground school. Mm -hmm. um, th with the ground school, they're learning some of the same training that we would do with horses. So they're learning to lead a horse, they're learning how to groom them, um, they might be learning equine anatomy, um, they could also be learning how to teach them tricks. So you can teach horses to smile. Aww. My daughter likes that relationship. Like Mr. Ed? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I wish we could teach them to talk. <laughs> like, I think they use peanut butter is what I heard with Mr. Ed. Um, and then we also have um, interactive vaulting, which is um, what Sherry, who spoke here last time, she, that's, she's qualified to do that. That's a whole other training. And um, that is like gymnastics on horseback. So you could have a group of three to six girls or boys um, we don't have an adult group right now. This is mainly children. And they would get a chance to work um, not only on social skills and problem solving in the interactive vaulting class. It lasts an hour and a half. They also do get to get on the horse and do different poses. So they can learn, you know, like a tabletop where they're kneeling and, you know, on stride the horse. Um, my daughter has even stood on the horse while wow. I was walking. And, you know, of course, we have people beside them, right. sidewalkers. Probably, we have yeah. a lot, yeah, a lot of safety in place. Um, we also have a Healing with Horses group, which is an equine facility psychotherapy and that's for cancer survivors um, we just ran one in the fall which was actually studied by ECU's occupational therapy department mm -hmm. Dr. Lynn Murphy so I'm really anxious to hear the research back from that but it was an amazing group of six cancer survivors and we have um, that collaboration with Vident so their um, oncology social worker comes and does an hour of group therapy after we've done an hour of equine assisted activity so all on wow. that yeah it was amazing it was amazing a lot of people that were in that group were very nervous about working with horses, had not had any experience. You don't have to have experience to, to come to Rock and Horse Ranch. And how do you, if you don't have the strength to get up there, how do you get up there if you want to get up on top of that horse? Okay, so a lot of people ask that. Now, most people are, you know, like they look at like trick movies where the person's jumping from the ground. <laughs> uh, we used to mount from the ground, but really now people don't do that because if you think about like when you're holding onto the saddle, that weight, it shifts across their backbone. So a lot of people now use a mounting block. Um, and that's a safer way to get on. For most of our students, they're actually using a ramp. So we have a wonderful ramp that you can gently walk up. We can also use wheelchairs up there, walkers, and it puts you level with the horse so that you're not stressing the horse's back and also you're not in a position where you're unsteady on your feet. The key for us, um, that transfer from you know ground, you know, from the ramp to mm -hmm. the horse should be as smooth as possible. Um, that's a place that people fall and so we have everything worked out and that ramp um, works out very 
very well. So we have to desensitize our horses because, you know, obviously we're asking our horses to go in between a ramp and a block. So it's like a little, you know, chute or whatever. It's like a, a yeah. stall of some sort. Yeah, it's asking them to walk in. And so we desensitize our horses, you know, before they even come into the program, before they even do that. So. Wow. Yeah. It's that way it's, you know, a lot of people are like, a horse seems so big. Even our smaller horses, you know, even our ponies seem big. To the, I mean, they're mm -hmm. 800 pounds, you know. Um, so these are not small creatures. Speaking of small creatures, that we do have um, two miniature horses. They are, are um, you know, are, they came, they have joined our herd now, and they have been for a year and a half part of our group. And obviously we don't ride the miniature horses. They only weigh about 250. Um, we are putting them in a minivan and going to visit off-site. So people that couldn't come to us for whatever reasons, like nursing homes, or even we've gone to some schools that are interested in learning about equine-assisted activities and therapies. And these two miniature horses are our ambassadors that can go anywhere. Obviously they're gonna bring a full-size horse. Sure, 800 pounds coming in <laughs> into a, a nursing home. But these horses can go um, into Elevators. They don't mind glass doors. Um, they don't mind small places. So they're accustomed to some of the sounds that you might hear in a nursing home. Um, mm -hmm. Breathing treatments. Mm -hmm. Not alarmed by that. Uh, intercom systems. They are really. They really enjoy doing what they do. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of how ECU always brings in the therapy dogs during exam time. I was thinking, now that's what you got to bring exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> and miniature horses for it. And we have gone to PCC. We have yet to go to ECU. ECU has brought some students um, to us. So we've had their veterans group come out. Um, we've had our, um, the recreational therapy group has come out and their occupational therapy group has come out for on-site activities. But we have not brought the miniature horses to them. But um, Pitt Community College let us train in their elevators, so we owe them a huge debt of gratitude yeah. because I was calling up local businesses when we were getting the miniature horses, you know, desensitized. We really have to make sure we've covered all bases as exactly. far as training mm -hmm. goes. Tractor Supply was nice enough to let me practice in, you know, their, um, their building, and then uh, PCC let us do their elevators. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. I was just thinking maybe we ought to have you come over with one of them to, to help Most desensitize our staff during their crisis and all that stuff. Well, but you know, and, and now <laughs> miniature horses are being brought in much like therapy dogs. So, Sandy Hook, they had a miniature horse team that came in along with the therapist. And so, what we're finding is that they do the same kind of work. Um, similar to, to dogs, they're pack animals, herd animals. So you have that social fabric that is so key to human beings. The difference being is dogs are predators, so they have a little bit different um, element. And, and horses are prey. Um, being prey means that you're incredibly in tune with your environment, mm -hmm. uh, incredibly in tune. So they pick up on subtleties. And they were domesticated alongside humans much like dogs were. So um, studies are showing that horses read humans just as well as dogs. Wow. Um, but your dog might be interested when you've had a bad day, but it may not care if I've had a bad day. A horse cares whoever's had a bad day because that disrupts the environment and makes it a little bit less safe. So horses are more in tune in a way because that's the nature of being prey. There's a susceptibility. There's a reason to be hypervigilant, wow. if you will. Yeah. Very interesting. And so, and another thing about that you just reminded me of something fascinating is that um, when you train a guide dog, you maybe get 10, 12 years, they have a shorter lifespan, whereas horses can be up to 30 years. So your investment's doubled with that training, having a guide horse or a horse that's a therapy companion um, than if it's a, a dog. So that's why some people are making that change to um, having miniature horses act in that role with humans. So how did we get miniature horses? Well, you know, prehistoric horses were actually very little as well. So, you know, it's just a species. It's uh, miniature horses are different from ponies um, and they are proportionate just like horses are. So we just, it's lineage. Um, and you have miniature Appaloosas, like our uh, miniature horse. Yeah, so he, he, the one gunner who is four years old, he's actually a registered miniature Appaloosa. Wow. And he has the you know, spots and everything. Um, and, and so you can have like, you know, just like a full-size horse. Yeah, so. The other one is a chocolate Palomino. So he's this really pretty color in the winter. Like mm -hmm. It kind of looks like a Reese's peanut butter cup to me. <laughs> <laughs> just don't eat it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, so um, this, the cancer, let's get back to that okay. a minute. Um, is this an ongoing group that gets together? Or is that, I mean, Thank you. It is indeed. And, and we are taking um, registrants, people that might 
be interested in participating for the spring. So we would start the week of January 29th, and anybody who was interested um, could give me a call mm -hmm. at the 752-0153, um, and we would charge $25 for the whole 12 weeks. It is underwritten by both um, Rock and Horse Ranch and Vidant. So we work together to make it something that cancer survivors would find affordable. Um, our hope was to provide a service that's very unique, mm -hmm. but also very beneficial. And the goals of the group, what, what are the typical goals? So what we did is we worked with Jenny Higgins, who is the oncology social worker, and she um, gave us therapeutic goals. Um, for one of them, let's say facing your fears, um, a very common one, for all kinds of therapeutic settings, but obviously with cancer survivors, that can be particularly important. So um, when she gave us a therapy goal, we came up with an equine-assisted activity that would kind of dovetail with that therapeutic goal. Um, we would have that activity for an hour, and then she would do the group therapy for the following, you know, the following hour. And it's amazing. Um, we had somebody that was taking photographs throughout the the mm -hmm. past fall session and just the change in the confidence it, like it's visible you know and some of the participants was like I cannot believe like when I started like how scared I was to lead this horse and now I have such a comfort zone I have such a partnership we um, the first day that we uh, connect with the horses the first day that participants come we introduce them to all, you know the, the horses that we'll be working with um, and what you'll find is that people have an intuitive gravitation towards one horse and the, it's reciprocated. Oftentimes the horse gives us indication that that's a good match. And what we're looking for is that partnership throughout the 12 weeks or the 10 weeks that they're working together. We, they work with the same horse and that's key because mm -hmm. you think about how important it is um, when you're working on, on something like that to mm -hmm. have that relationship and that relationship builds over those periods to where the horse recognizes them um, and you can see it, you know, and, and they so feel cool. that that deep affinity and if you ask them, would you like to switch with anybody else? Like is there any other horse? They're like, no, nobody <laughs> would switch. Everybody wants their exact horse. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. And I, I have had personal experiences with that as a child. Um, we, my father bought us a horse. Um, he and I were both interested in horses. Yeah. And uh, this horse had been uh, terribly abused. Yeah. Um, and so they gave us so many weeks to see if we could bridle them or even saddle them. Perfect. And I used to take all my mother's carrots out of the refrigerator <laughs> and go to the blocks to where the horse was being uh, held for yeah. us. And I would sit up on that fence. To earn his trust. To, to and it, 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 I would throw the carrots out. Because he wouldn't come close? It, no, it wouldn't come wow. anywhere near. Wow. Uh, if you went up, you know, if you got near him and put your hand up on his neck, yeah. he would rear and kick you. He was scared. Uh, oh, that's he, how Because that's what he was whipped around the head and he yeah. just wouldn't have anything to do with it. So it took me about four weeks with the apples and carrots, yeah. and he finally came over and knocked me off the fence. <laughs> so we're friends <laughs> and I now. Went, All right, <laughs> you're in. We got this. I could get close to you. Mm. But what you're talking about? So we, I, I knew you'd get along with Sammy. Sammy's the um, other miniature horse that's a, a deputy. Mm -hmm. um, that I was saying, he had abuse issues, and he's very head shy. Exactly what you're describing, mm -hmm. and you have to earn his trust. He has come immensely a long way. He will always be reserved. But um, exactly what you did was that building that relationship, becoming a safe person. And that probably didn't extend past anybody but you for that one horse, because um, that's, that's so key. Well, my father was eventually able to bridle him and stuff, yeah. but it became my horse because he wouldn't let anybody else yeah, that's ride him. Was, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't big enough, because I was only about eight or nine wow. years old. I wasn't big enough to, to get the bridle up or carry the saddle, but... Yeah. Um, but he, he, he she, well, it was a she. She would allow him yeah. to, to do that, and then, but she would not allow him to get on her. Yeah. Uh, actually stomped his foot when he tried to get up on Because, so, you know, like I said, horses, just like human beings, have that post-traumatic mm -hmm. experience. They yeah. um, decide, okay, this is not safe, you know, avoid people at mm -hmm. all costs. And obviously you were an exception because you showed up, you built that relationship. Yeah, every day. I love that horse. But um, let's get back to this. Um, Okay, so you do have programs if you don't want to get on the back of the horse. Yes. Uh, maybe you have back issues or maybe you can't do that. What other things do you have that people can get involved so with? So the back, in, you know, and bringing up back, there are movements. That, so when we are talking about therapeutic riding, the way the horse moves, um, it, it simulates exactly and it stimulates the same muscles you and I would use with walking. So when a horse's right shoulder goes forward, our right hip rocks forward and it's stimulating that core muscles as you're balancing on the horse. 
Um, for people with back issues, we do have some people with back issues that do ride, and there are particular horses that they would ride because horses move differently, just like people move hmm. differently. Yeah, and what's fascinating is that um, one horse, uh, Cody, for whatever reason, he seems to like, if somebody has a back issue, he seems to cramp it up. To me, he doesn't move any differently. Um, but I trust people when they say this, you know, and I ask them, stay very in touch with your body so we know if this movement is something that's helpful. Um, so there are some gated horses that people with back injuries find move differently mm -hmm. and don't disrupt that back. But if somebody didn't want to ride and felt like, and, and there was contraindication for it, they could be learning something like round pinning. So if you've never seen round and pinning, to me it's the like what? round pinning. So it's um, <laughs> P-E-N-N-I-N-G. And if you look up, if you Google or YouTube round pinning, there's all kinds of horse training videos out there. To me, and how we do it, um, it's kind of like uh, a dance between the um, person, the participant, or myself, I round pin as well. Um, because you develop a particular, it's great for exercising a horse, but more importantly, not just exercising their body, exercising their mind, and you're developing a partnership. Um, it was mind-blowing for me to see the veterans group um, do the round pinning because it, it was just amazing. So um, when you're in the center, the horse is at liberty, meaning it has no halter on, it has no lead line, it has no lunge line. It's just at liberty, mm -hmm. free to do as it pleases. The person is in the center and it literally is a round pin. Most of them have a certain uh, circumference. Okay. Um, ours is a little larger, so you can end up really breaking a sweat. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, if you have a horse that doesn't want to do the job. Um, <laughs> but so you use your body um, to direct the direction of the horse, direct the speed of the horse. Okay, and are you on turns. the horse? Nope, you no. are in the center. So you were, yes, yeah. And for a lot of people, wow. this is very scary because you're asking them to be in the center of this ring with a horse that, it, and you've already have a relationship with the horse, so I wouldn't, you wouldn't be in there. Um, but, you know, asking the person to connect with the horse through body language and get the horse to move in a certain direction. Um, you would use opening up your body, your point in which direction you want the horse to go. You do have a whip, you're not using it to whip the horse. That's obviously, it's just an extension of your hand. You couldn't even reach him if you had to. Um, but it's just an extension. So this is kind of like a go. Mm -hmm. This would be like your go button, and this would be the direction that you're going in. Where your body is in the center, you're moving um, alongside the horse, and uh, you know we, we talk you through that. But by the end of it, um, the horse will start licking and chewing, which are all signs of relaxation. Um, horses like to have a leader. You know, all, mm -hmm. all horse herds, um, just like a, a dog has a pack leader, they have a herd leader. Um, the herd leader is... Um, a, entrusted with the, her the herd mm -hmm. safety. So you have to be a trustworthy, consistent um, person to respect. Um, so the horse, once you've got them moving and changing directions and connecting with you, they'll start licking and chewing and they want to come in the center. If you lay that whip down and then you turn your body a certain way, which um, you know takes off the pressure, you're not asking them to do anything, they will come up and do what we call joining up. And once they've joined up, you literally could walk anywhere and that horse would follow you. Mm -hmm. And the impact of that cannot, cannot be underestimated of realizing that this horse has decided you are worthy and you are my partner and mm -hmm. I will go anywhere with you. Whether you have a lead rope or not, I trust you. That's cool. And, and so that has been a place that we've seen you know, huge leaps uh, of confidence, of, of, of just that, that partnership. It's, it's a very deep experience. And, and for a lot of our veterans, they would say that was the moment that something really shifted for them. So the dogs have Caesar Milan, but we horses have Malika. <laughs> rocket horse ranch. Oh, no. We have rocket horse ranch. There, you know, and fortunately, uh, there are, and there are things that, that uh, like long lining. That's something that I would never do. That's what Sherry and Ashlyn, I have them for because it's two ropes and you're direct reining, but you're not uh, on the horse. It's how you learn to drive or how we used to plow. And evidently, I can't, uh, my right and left hand don't cooperate, <laughs> and I can end up in knots. So when we taught that to the cancer survivors group, it was not we, it was them. <laughs> and I watched because that's something I find very challenging. That's interesting. Very challenging. That's yeah. so cool. All right, so you got a new program starting. We do indeed. We oh, do indeed. Tell about it. So the Building Bridges program is something I'm incredibly excited about. Um, I was telling you about the horses, I mean, the two miniature horses getting deputized. And for us, this was a huge opportunity to work with Pitt County Sheriffs. Um, and so the Building Bridges program is something that the Pitt County Sheriff's Department um, and ECU 
and Rock and Horse Ranch collaborated on. We asked ECU to do any research portion of it and to also talk about you know, therapeutic goals that people who have witnessed or experienced trauma um, might benefit from. And we talked to Pitt County Sheriffs about what would, you, you know, what would be helpful, what, um, what do you need from us. And then Rock and Horse Ranch, we had the two miniature horses. I knew they were really good with people and with working in you know, one-on-one situations. So the miniature horses now work with um, victims and witnesses of trauma and crime. And it's once a week. We found funding for it, which was amazing. Yeah, we've really lucked out um, and um, had a lot of support. Um, Women for Women, for example, they, you know, for any female in Pitt County um, that is going through uh, with the, the Pitt County Sheriffs could get in touch with us and they provided some funding for us to um, provide this. And the miniature, what they'll learn with the miniature horses is either leading or grooming or some other activity. And um, so far we've, we've been fortunate enough to work with some survivors of domestic violence and some children who have survived sexual abuse and they come once, a, you know, one time, one time. They can come again, but it's that initial opportunity. The Pitt County Sheriff's, we had several deputies that came through training with us mm -hmm. to learn the nonverbal cues of horses and to learn how to handle them because I think it's important uh, for, like, how that bridge is built is that we know with the deputy holding the horse, they then get connected to the person that's come to work with the horse. Uh, it's my hope that it's something um, that is very healing and grounding and connects them, whoever has come through, with the Pitt County Sheriffs. Um, we've talked about allowing them to come back through and that'll be a decision that Pitt County Sheriffs makes. Mm -hmm. um, but we're certainly open to it. <clears throat> and also they could then, if they felt like they qualified for therapeutic riding, they could continue on it a different, you know, different way. That's just so, so awesome. It is, it I is know. Awesome. I, I mean, in the minute, they're amazing. I mean, what I've seen is those horses respond in such a fascinating way. So. Um, Sammy, the one who's been abused, a lot of the, the kids that have experienced something scary, they, under, they intuitively get him and he gets them. You know, he gets how it feels to be a little cautious about wow. safety. You know, he gets that. And, and, and I see that relationship and it's just, it's amazing. And Gunner, you know, he's an extrovert who's been baby. He's the one I've spoiled rotten. <laughs> He thinks everybody's ready to take his picture, but he's great with people that are not ready to come out of their shell because he'll come over there and he'll say, I know you love me. I'm going to let you get a chance to pet me. So the, having those two different personalities. Right about here. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I'll even show you where you could do it. And he has been known to, you know, get my back, get my butt, and get my chin. Um, he That's has right. a very tiny tiny little face but so those two personalities have actually been a blessing uh, having the very different um, you know if you don't like A you might like B that's right um, and they all one, have their own personality and they all have their assets they all have their gifts that they offer just like people they all have their gifts and they all have their you know harder things their challenges just like we do all right. so, yeah how do we get involved? <laughs> I would love, I would love to come over to uh, you know to y'all and just bring them one time. Yeah, I mean, like great. A, just to meet meet the Minis Day. Yeah. Um, I I think that um, it's amazing to be able to take them to other people. That that was the key. I was starting to feel frustrated because um, I had wanted to start a Silver Saddles and work more with Alzheimer's. Um, and mm -hmm. people with memory loss. And then what I realized is that, okay, well, we have a barrier. You know, we have a barn. There's a lot of obstacles. It's a lot to ask. And I thought, why can't we? And I've never been a fan of miniature horses because I like to ride. <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't really know. You know, I like to ride. And yeah. we can't ride these little guys. Um, so I didn't really see, like, much use for them. I didn't need a, a lawn mower. Um, <laughs> and I didn't need a statue, you know, like a lawn ornament. <laughs> yeah. um, but they have worked out fantastic. I couldn't have known. And in the first place we went, there was a woman who was 104. And um, she was, you know, in a bed. She wasn't even in a wheelchair because she had some stiffness in her body. And she um, was now visually impaired. And they said that she didn't, um, you know, she didn't communicate a lot. It gets harder, you know, mm -hmm. as you age and as that narrow, you know, people aren't coming in as much, you're not getting as much interaction. People may not know what, you know, lights your spark, um, gets you back in the world. And she, um, we asked her, can we put your hand on the horse's mane? And, and she nodded, but, but I wasn't certain she had heard us. So we gently took her hand and we put it on, on Sammy. Mm -hmm. Sammy's perfect because he's, he's a little bit taller than Gunner. And he's also very quiet. He's not wiggly. Um, and he stood there and she put, stroked one time and she said, it's a horse, I want to ride it. <laughs> like she, 
she knew right what that was. And, and like, so immediately she started talking about growing up on a farm, you know, and she had an immediate access. And then everybody around her got to learn something new about her that they didn't know, that they could now bring up. That's awesome. Yes. And I, um, you know, I knew music therapy worked. You know, my mother had early onset Alzheimer's. So it's obviously something I'm very passionate about. And Elvis could always get her out of her shell. You know, she didn't know who I was, but Elvis always brought her back. And, and so what is it that brings people back? What is it that connects them, gets that spark? Um, and the minis do, do that. Plus, you know, how often do you get to see horses walking down the <laughs> nursing home? In your house. <laughs> or in your house. That's where they trained, by the way, in the house. Oh, man. Because in my house, they, they came to my house for two years of training before we even considered bringing them to rock and horse and um so i would tell my girls okay it's time to bring the horses inside <laughs> like, Ma. <laughs> no, i had to buy a carpet cleaner not because they were pooing in there but because their homes would be dirty and there'd be these little oh, footprints <laughs> all about the house where i'd brought them and then the gunner quickly learned that during the summer my house was air conditioned he didn't want to leave. So I would get calls at work. Um, Gunner won't leave the house, because my eldest would train him and bring him in. She'd be like, I can't get Gunner out of the house. And I thought, who else is getting these crisis calls? <laughs> I can't get the horse out of the house. <laughs> Help! <laughs> I was like, well, have you tried treats? She said, I've tried everything. I said, we're on our way. <laughs> oh, man. The problems we have. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, thank you for coming. And if people want to get a, get involved in the program, they just give you a call. Just give me a call. I am glad to do barn tours. Um, if people have questions about would disability qualify, just give me a call. Um, I'm there, you know, most days in the morning is the easiest time if um, for some reason we're out working horses because that's part of, obviously, we train the horses. Um, just leave a message and I'll call you back. Right. Um, thank you so much, Mary, for all that you do for Pitt oh, County. Oh, well, thank you. It's been fun. <laughs> I, know, I can't wait to bring the horses next time. No, okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Thank you. So thank you for what you're doing. Um, thank you all for watching the show. And if you want to see the little guys, you give her a call. Yeah, she will be happy to show awesome. you. Okay. <laughs> thank you for watching the Pit Resource Connection.